Okay, uh, so today uh, we'll start the blood. Blood is a part of cardiovascular system. Uh, you know that inside the heart and blood vessels, you find the blood. And it is a very important component of our body. You all know that. And today we'll start uh, to talk about the blood. In today's lecture, uh, first we see the definition of blood. How to define blood? What is blood? If somebody asks you, what is blood? Then how you will define the blood? We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about some important information of blood. Then we'll talk about the important functions of the blood. Then we'll see the components, important components of the blood. And then we'll see how we can separate the different components of blood. How we can separate the blood cells from the plasma and how we can separate different types of plasma proteins. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, the blood, if you see the components of blood, two important components you will find in the blood. What are those? Blood cells. The cells of the blood are called formed elements. Okay? So we'll talk about that. I am not going to write on the board now. So formed elements are what? Blood cells. Different types of blood cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells, platelet. And another part of blood is fluid or liquid part that is called the plasma. So blood has two major components, the form elements and plasma. Form elements are what? Blood cells, right? And plasma is the liquid or fluid part of the blood. Now, uh, in today's lecture, we'll see the source of plasma, from where the plasma comes. And then, <coughs> if you see the plasma, plasma contains proteins, and those are called plasma proteins. So plasma proteins are the proteins of the plasma, right? And what are the different types of plasma proteins present in the plasma? We'll see that. And then we'll talk about the form elements, the blood cells. You know that form elements are the blood cells. We'll talk about different types of blood cells. First, we'll talk about the red blood cells, or RBC. Okay? So, we'll talk about the general information on red blood cells, morphology of red blood cells. Morphology means how the red blood cell looks like under the microscope. You see the red blood cells under the microscope, uh, how they look like, that's the morphology from outside. Then we'll talk about the formation and maturation of red blood cells. The site of production of red blood cells, from where the red blood cells come, and how the red blood cells get matured. So we'll talk about those. Then we'll talk about the destruction of red blood cells. What is that? The red blood cells live in our body for 90 to 120 days. That's the lifespan of red blood cells, right? The lifespan of red blood cells is 90 to 120 days, three to four months. And after that, the red blood cells are destroyed. So we'll see how the red blood cells are destroyed and the consequences of that. Inside the red blood cells, you will find red colored pigments, and those are called hemoglobin. And because of the presence of red pigments hemoglobin, the color of the blood 
the color of red blood cells is red. Very simple, right? Because hemoglobin is red colored pigments. So because of the presence of hemoglobin in the blood, the blood is red. And hemoglobin is present inside the red blood cells. That's why the red blood cells are red. Okay. So we'll talk about the structure and functions of hemoglobin. Why hemoglobin is important. So how to define the blood? Blood is a special type of connective tissue that circulates throughout the body within a closed system. Okay? Now, blood is a connective tissue. And you know that. What are the other connective tissues in our body? Bones are connective tissue. Cartilages are connective tissue. Facts, adipose tissue are connective tissue. Remember from NP1 that all those are connective tissue, right? But they are different from one to another, very much, right? Different. But all of them are connective tissue. Why? I told you a few times before. Because all of them originate, all of those originate from a single source. What's the name of that source? Starts with M. Tell out. Mesenchyme. Do you remember that? All of them, yeah, you shouldn't forget. All of them come from a single source. That's why all of them are connective tissue, although they look very different uh, from each other. Okay? So the source is mesenchymal tissue or mesenchyme. Okay? This is M. Uh, so, mesenchymal tissue or mesenchyme. That's the source of all connective tissues. And that's why, since blood also comes from mesenchymal tissue, blood is a connective tissue. Okay, so I can ask this question in the test. Why blood, what type of tissue blood is? Blood belongs to what tissue? What, which tissue? Connective tissue. Why blood is a connective tissue? Because it comes from mesenchymal tissue of cells. Okay. That circulates throughout the body. We know that blood circulates throughout the body within a closed system. What is the closed system? Closed system is the heart and the blood vessels. Right? Because heart is a closed chamber and blood vessels are closed tube-like structure. So, circulates throughout the body within a closed system. Now, blood is a connective tissue, but special type of connective tissue. Why blood is called a special type of connective tissue? Why? Anybody? It is in liquid status, in liquid or fluid form. All other connective tissues are in solid form. Your bones, your cartilages, your adipose tissue fat, all those are in solid form. Blood is the only connective tissue which is in liquid form. That's why it is a special type of connective tissue. Very nice definition. Okay. <coughs> so that's the definition of blood. And some important information you got there. Now we'll talk about uh, general properties of blood. Some uh, general information on blood. The color. Arterial blood is bright red, and venous blood is dark red or bluish red. Why arterial blood is bright red? Because in arterial blood, oxygen is attached to the hemoglobin more, right? Oxygen is present more, you know that in the arteries. So when oxygen binds with hemoglobin, remember that hemoglobin gives bright illumination, bright light, okay, bright color. So because of oxygen, the arterial blood is bright red. And venous blood is dark red because of the presence of carbon dioxide okay, in the venous blood. The pH of blood is 
7.35 to 7.45. And what's the neutral pH? What's the neutral pH? <coughs> not acidic, not alkaline. 7.0, right? 7. So if it goes above 7, it is alkaline. And if the pH is below 7, it is what? Acidic, right? So the pH of blood is 7.35 to 7.45. That means slightly alkaline, right? A little bit higher than neutral. And viscosity of blood, just know that viscosity indicates the thickness. And viscosity of blood is high. Temperature of blood is slightly higher than the body temperature. That means the blood is slightly warmer than the body. And the temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. The volume of blood in our body in liters. In adult male, the total volume of blood is 5 to 6 liters. In adult female, the volume of blood, total volume of blood is 4 to 5 liters. So in female, the volume of blood is less than the adult male. Why? Very simple. The average size of the male is bigger than the average size of the female. Not true all the time. Okay? So but average. When we say something, we say average, like you take two hundreds and then measure, right? Individual variation is always there. Okay, so that's the volume, total volume of blood. So remember uh, these important uh, properties of blood. I may ask a couple of questions from here in your exam. If I ask blood is slightly acidic or slightly alkaline, what's the pH of blood, all those things, okay? Now, the important functions of blood. Blood provides oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. You know that uh, blood circulates throughout the body. Why? To give or deliver the oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. And Oxygen and nutrients must be given to the tissues because tissues, our tissues, our cells need the oxygen and nutrients for metabolism, right? Those are the materials we need, our tissues need for metabolism. Without oxygen, without nutrients, no metabolism will occur. Transport materials and from cells. What are the materials transported by the blood? Blood transports oxygen, nutrients. In addition to those, blood also transports hormones, right? Antibodies that fight against the microorganisms. So hormones, antibodies, those important materials are also transported by the blood. <coughs> Regulation of pH. Blood, just know that blood has some buffers. Have you heard the name buffers? Those are called blood buffers. What's the function of a buffer? Maintain the pH, right? Buffers <coughs> try to keep the pH constant. Right? So buffers try to keep the pH constant. And blood has <coughs> some important buffers. Those are called what? Blood buffers. If I ask you what are the important blood buffers, important blood buffers are Ammonia, buffer 
phosphate buffer and plasma protein also works as buffer, so plasma buffers. So those are important blood buffers present in the blood and they always try to keep the pH constant. Constant means between 7.35 to 7.145, right? That's the pH of blood. So if the pH goes above 7.45, those buffers will try to bring them down. Or if uh, it goes below 7.35, these buffers will come forward and will mix. Coagulation, another very really important function of the blood. What is coagulation? Coagulation is the conversion of liquid blood into semi-solid jelly-like structure. So coagulation helps in the stoppage of bleeding helps in the arrest of bleeding or stoppage of bleeding. When you get a cut, you know that a clot is formed, right? And that process of formation of clot is called coagulation. So that is very important to prevent the loss of blood from the body. Defense. Blood <coughs> destroys the microorganisms. You know that microorganisms always try to harm our body, right? And try to invade <coughs> in our body. Microorganisms, bacteria, virus, virus, they always try to invade in our body and destroy the cells of the body. Try to harm our body, right? And blood destroys the microorganisms in two ways. One is blood has white blood cells, WBC, white blood cells. And white blood cells, some white blood cells can engulf the microorganisms and destroy them by phagocytosis. You know phagocytosis, right? It's the process of engulfing the antibodies. So, or microorganisms. So, some white blood cells can directly get attached to the microorganisms and destroy them by phagocytosis. Blood also contains antibodies. Okay, antibodies and antibodies. Can. Those are not cells, they are proteins. Antibodies are proteins, they are not cells, but those antibodies can get attached to the microorganisms and kill them or inactivate them. So just remember that by two means, by two ways, the blood fights against the microorganisms and destroy them. Number one, some white blood cells can do phagocytosis and destroy the microorganisms. And blood also has what? Antibodies. Antibodies are proteins. Okay? And they can inactivate or destroy the microorganisms. Just remember those things. Stabilization of body temperature. Uh, if in particular area <coughs> there are body temperature increases, the temperature increases, for example, if in your head area the temperature increases, then blood will go to that area and take the heat and diffuse it, distribute it throughout the body. The reason is blood has water, a lot of water in it, right? The water can take the heat and take from one place to another place, and that is the main way the blood uh, stabilizes the body temperature. Uh, helps in excretion of metabolic wastes. You know that continuously inside our bodies harmful metabolic 
waste are being produced because when metabolism metabolism is a continuous process right metabolism is occurring 24 hours continuously in our body and when metabolism occurs carbon dioxide is produced and other harmful toxic chemicals are produced what are those harmful toxic chemicals i can name a couple of them urea uric acid ammonia those are very harmful okay just uh, know those three urea uric acid ammonia others are creatine creatine those are also harmful chemicals produced in our body during metabolism okay so those harmful chemicals should be taken to the kidneys right from the tissue the harmful toxic chemicals should be taken to the kidneys and then they will get out from the body through the urine right but who will take collect those harmful chemicals from the tissue throughout the body and take it to the kidneys the blood right blood because blood circulates throughout the body so blood will take those toxic chemicals from the tissues of our body and deliver that to the kidneys and then we get out from the body okay so we know now the important functions of the blood now we talk about the composition of blood what are the important components present in the blood i already have mentioned that blood consists of plasma which is the liquid or fluid part of the blood and the formed elements which are the cells different types of cells in the blood blood cells okay now first we will see the plasma plasma is the fluid part and that makes up about 55% volume of blood so plasma volume is 55% and 45% volume is given volume of blood is given by the formed elements that is the cells different types of blood cells now if i ask you if you take 100 ml of blood in a test tube what should be the volume of formed elements you have taken 100 total 100 ml right of blood in a test tube so what should be the volume of formed elements 45 ml right and what should be the volume of plasma 55 1 okay now uh, if you see the components of plasma the fluid part of blood plasma is mainly water 92 percent volume of plasma is water <coughs> mostly water and 7% volume of plasma is given by the plasma proteins. So plasma consists of water, plasma proteins, and other solutes. Very less amount, a small amount of other uh, solutes are present in the plasma. So that's the plasma. <coughs> Formed elements are the blood cells. Three types of blood cells are formed elements are present red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Okay, so those are the formed elements and they form 45% volume of blood. Okay, so here uh, in this picture they have shown uh, the blood in a test tube. And this blood has two components. You already know the plasma, has 45 percent, and sorry, 55 percent, and formed elements, uh, 55 percent. They have shown the veins, um, but you don't need to remember that. Just know that if I ask you, the volume of plasma is what percent? 55 percent. Right? Volume of formed elements, 45 percent. Okay, now 
they have shown here that components of plasma, plasma is mainly what? Water. 92% of plasma is water, right? And 7% of plasma is plasma protein. <coughs> that means plasma proteins means proteins in the plasma. Very simple. But you need to know what are the important plasma proteins in the plasma. Important plasma proteins are albumins, globulins, and fibrinogen. Remember those three. Albumins, globulins, and fibrinogens. There are some other plasma proteins in a small amount, but remember those three. Those are the major plasma proteins. Can you write those on the board? Albumins. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. I think those are the next slides, but I'll write here. Fibrinogen or kibrinogen, whatever you say. Okay, so those are the major, major plasma proteins. <coughs> now I'll mention one important function of each of those three plasma proteins. You have to remember that. I will ask in the exam, certainly, uh, what are the functions of those plasma proteins. I just mentioned one uh, of each. You have to remember that, OK? So album is the main function of album is maintaining the colloid osmotic pressure. Maintaining the colloid osmotic pressure. <clears throat> I'll tell you what is that. Just wait. Globulins. <clears throat> Globulins are antibodies. And antibodies to what? <laughs> Micro Destroy the microorganisms or the microorganisms or inactivate the microorganisms, right? So the globulins are antibodies. Okay, so they inactivate or destroy the microorganisms. So globulins are responsible for defensive function. Fibrinogens are responsible for the formation of clot, blood clot. So, formation of clot. Okay, so those are just uh, the major functions of those three plasma proteins. Now, <coughs> plasma protein and <coughs> has have another function uh, that is transportation. Transportation. So plasma proteins album is uh, transport some uh, chemicals, but we don't uh, if I ask you, tell me the most important function of album is that's the colloid osmotic pressure. What is that? Colloid osmotic pressure is the pressure that tries to keep the blood in the center of the blood vessels while, while the blood passes through the blood vessels. You know that blood, blood passes through the blood vessels, right? And when the blood passes through the blood vessels, if this is the blood vessel, uh, the colloid osmotic pressure tries to keep the blood in the center of the blood vessels and prevents the sine wave movement of the blood. So blood will not go 
towards the wall of the blood vessels. Instead, blood will try to run through the center of the blood vessel. Make sense? So if the blood tries to go to the side towards the wall, then blood flow will get slower or faster? Slower. Slower, right? If blood stays in the center of the blood vessels, then the flow will be faster, right? So, make sense? So, colloidal osmotic pressure, colloidal osmotic pressure tries to keep all the molecules together and come to the center of the blood vessel. That way, the flow will be more efficient, faster, right? If they try to move to the side towards the wall, then the flow will be slower, okay? So, that's the uh, colloidal osmotic pressure. Uh, <coughs> now, the formed elements are red blood cells. They look red. White blood cells. There are five different types of white blood cells. We we'll learn about that in uh, next class. So just know that there are five different types of white blood cells: neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. Okay, and platelets. So those are the blood cells or formed elements. Fractionation. Fractionation is the process of separating the components of blood. Very simple. Blood has different components, right? Plasma and formed elements. And there are different types of plasma proteins, right? Albumins, globulins, fibrin organs. How you will separate them? That process of separating the components of blood is called what? Fractionation. fractionation. Okay, so fractionation is the process by which you can separate different components of the blood. And the main, most useful method of fractionation is centrifugation. You know how to centrifugation? You will yeah, spin. You will take the blood in a test tube and centrifuge it, spin it in different resolutions, different evolution. And that will do what? Separate the formed elements and plasma. When you will centrifuge the blood in a test tube, what will happen? The blood cells or formed elements will try to go to the bottom of the test tube and the fluid part, that is the plasma, right? Will go to the top part. So the cells will settle down, and the plasma part, this part will go to the top part. And now, <coughs> so that is the fractionation, and we use the centrifugation that method to separate the uh, formed elements and plasma. Now, uh, if you, after you do that, if this is a test tube, this is the test tube, and you have taken uh, 100 milliliter of blood here. So after you complete the centrifugation or fractionation, you will see the blood cells will go to the bottom. And what should be the volume of blood cells? 45, very good, 45. And milliliter here. And plasma will go to the top, and that should be 55 milliliters. Make sense? Because you have taken 100 milliliters. Now, this volume of blood cells is called hematocrit. Hematocrit is the volume of blood cells in the blood. So hematocrit should be 45%. Now, if you see the definition here, it's a little bit different than what I said, right? The definition here is saying that hematocrit is the volume of red blood cells. But I said it is the volume of the blood cells, right? Actually, they are same. Same is almost same. The reason is in our blood, the number of red blood cells 
is really very high compared to the white blood cells and platelet. What will happen if you separate the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets here? You will see that this whole part is formed by red blood cells, and it's just a thin coat will be formed here, will look white, and that is the white blood cell. Okay? So if you see the formed elements, white blood cells, and that we see when you do the centrifugation, you'll see this part is red, a thin layer of white blood cells here. So if you measure this volume, the blood, the volume of blood cells and the volume of red blood cells almost same. very little bit. So that's uh, why they have said here that the volume of red blood cells, same, the volume of the and point something in this Okay, so that is the fractionation and hematocrit value and the process of fractionation. Now, uh, the hematocrit value is different in male and female. That makes sense. The reason is, if you examine the female blood, the count of red blood cells will be less than male. In male blood, the red blood cell count is higher than the female, right? And since the hematocrit is the volume of the blood cells, or red blood cells, then that's why the hematocrit value is less in female than the male. Just know uh, the information I provided. Okay, we have talked about that. We have talked about different types of um, plasma proteins and components of plasma. So if I ask you the <coughs> plasma, plasma is mostly what? Water. Water, 92% water, water, right? Plasma is mostly water. And 7% is what? Plasma proteins. What are the important plasma proteins? Algorithms, globulins, criminals, and you know important functions of those. Now, uh, other solutes are only 1%. Uh, no need to talk about that. Okay, now the origin of plasma proteins. From where the plasma proteins come into circulation, into the blood? Most of the plasma proteins, or you can say plasma proteins, mainly comes from, uh, come from the liver. Liver is the main source of plasma proteins. 90% or more plasma proteins are produced in the liver. Okay? And small amount of antibodies. Antibodies are globulins, right? Antibodies are globulins. So that plasma protein, globulins, or antibodies, small amount, come from the plasma cells. Plasma cells are the cells that are produced from lymphocytes, one type of white blood cells. So what happens, how many white blood cells we have? Anybody? Five, right? Five. Neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. You, I, I'm not going to go over those because we'll talk about that in next class, right? So just, I have mentioned a few slides ago that the five different types of plasma protein, uh, uh, white blood cells are present in our blood, right? Five, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. The lymphocytes, are converted to plasma cells, okay? So lymphocytes produce plasma cells, and that plasma cells produce a lot of antibodies in the blood. So that's why the small amount of antibodies come from plasma cells. Just know 
those two. And just uh, no important functions of those three types of uh, nobodies, so uh, you don't need to remember everything here. If I ask you, I will ask the important functions of those three types of plasma bodies. And I'll get to the questions from you. Okay, so uh, we have talked about the plasma part of the cell. Now we'll talk about the form elements of large cells. And three types of blood cells. Then blood cells are RBCs or erythrocytes. Erythro indicates the red blood cells. Sites are the cells. So erythrocytes are also uh, the red blood cells. Erythrocytes, another name of red blood cell is erythrocytes. The main function of red blood cells or erythrocytes, the main function is transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide. You know that the red blood cells contain hemoglobin, right? And that's why red blood cells are red. And that hemoglobin can bind with the oxygen and carbon dioxide and transport those gases. So that's the main function of red blood cells, transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide, because hemoglobin can bind with those gases. White blood cells are also called WBC or leukocytes. Leuco indicates white and cytes means the cells. So leukocytes are the white blood cells. And if I ask you, tell me the most important function, function of leukocytes of white blood cells. When I talked about the defense, how blood provides defense, white blood cells can do what? White blood cells can engulf the microorganisms, right? So the main function of white blood cells is they are the part of the immune system, protects the body by destroying the microorganisms. Platelets. Platelets are the cells that produce the clot, help in the formation of clot. So, Platelets prevent the loss of blood by formation of by forming the clot. But I, when I talked about plasma proteins, I mentioned one plasma protein that helps in the formation of clot. What is that? Fibrinogen, right? Fibrinogens help in the formation of clot. Now we got another component of blood that also helps in the formation of clot. That is what? Platelets. So those two things together form the clot. One is platelets, another is the fibrinogen. Remember that, okay? Okay. Now, should we stop, right? Uh, uh, you are in uh, NP2? Yeah. In which section? Uh, what is your class hour? Okay, so we have to start it. We'll start at 10 o'clock. Uh, just wait, okay? Yeah.